here on a rooftop in Bushwick, Brooklyn with none other than Notar, the master of rap, rock, hip hop, and R&B fusion. Uh, Notar, it's great to be with you here today. Uh, we have a beautiful view of the city and an opportunity to get to know you better. It's a pleasure to be here, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. You know, I come out to your live events and I am just absolutely blown away by the intensity of your performances. I think you bring a measure of a performance that is unmatched by any of your peers today. Where does all this boundless energy come from? Uh, energy really just comes from, from honesty and, and the emotion that I try and put forth in my music. I try and let that translate in my live shows and, and leave it all out on stage the best I can every show. And the way you interact with your band, it's obvious. You guys have been friends for a while. You, you get along with them really good. It's obvious when you're on stage the way you interact with them and with your audience. Uh, how often do you guys rehearse? Because you guys are tight. Well, the first part of that is we're, we're definitely close. We're definitely like a band of brothers. We've been together for you know about three years. A couple members changed here and there. Um, as far as rehearsals go, uh, try and get in there at least like two, three times a week. It's hard to manage you know people's schedules being in this in this business and stuff, but we do a pretty good job to get in there and try and keep things as tight as possible. The camaraderie on stage is really, uh, you know, between me and the band, we kind of want that to translate out into the crowd, so it's kind of one big, you know, group of mayhem, so to speak, so. It doesn't go unnoticed in, in your live shows and also on your album, which, by the way, I absolutely love, that there's a very strong patriotic theme that runs through your performances and the album itself. What is it about patriotism as a theme that keeps you coming back to it? Um, you know, I'm, I, I like to consider myself, you know, being patriotic. I have a lot of friends in the military. I have I volunteered for uh, Wounded Warrior Project. I do some stuff for them. I, I support our troops and, I, and, and that mentality of being a warrior just in everyday life and just trying to, like, go out and give 100%. And I, I think that's synonymous with, with patriotism. Excellent. Now, Stranger is a song that Adam Duritz is featured on, and it's a song about desolation, dislocation, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and you sing it almost from the first person, but it, it's not your experience. Um, is this the experience of somebody you actually know? Actually it was, it was two people. My brother-in-law, Brian Selecki, who served in the Marines, and my best friend, uh, God rest his soul, uh, Carl Piper White, who served in the Army. Um, at the time of the Iraq War, they were, uh, they were really writing me letters. I got to see how my sister's reaction, their family reaction, and I kind of culminated them into one character and, and spoke through them. I know them very well, I love them very much, so it was able to, I was kind of able to like see through their eyes and, and, and really let that translate to, to paper and then through the microphone the best way I could. It's a touching song and extremely powerful. I think you did it really well. Now I mentioned Adam Duritz a moment ago. You are signed to the record label that he owns. How did that happen? It was weird. <laughs> I, uh, I actually met um, Adam through a mutual friend who knew a friend that went to college. I mean, it was just like a, a, a span of people. You know, this guy owned an Italian restaurant, he was a dear friend of mine. A lot of people would pass through there and uh, my demo ended up in Adam's hands and one thing led to another from there. The County Crows also took you out on a pretty substantial tour. Yeah. Uh, how big was that tour and how long did it last? The tour was, the tour was pretty big. It was 35 cities. Um, it was uh, the Traveling Circus and Medicine show is what it was, and it was really a culmination of, of, of great bands. It was, it was, you know, my band, Counting Crows and Augustana, and it was the time of my life. It was, it was fantastic. It was, it was great. What were some of the larger shows you played? Like, how many people came out to these? A lot. Of, it, it varied at first. That we started off. I think we started off at Summerfest in Milwaukee when we played, and um, that's like one of the biggest festivals, summer festivals. Or there was like eighty thousand people there. So. Um, it, they varied. Some were smaller, some were bigger, but the average is probably about you know 15, 20,000 people a show. It's really nice. And did any shows like stand out as particularly memorable? I loved playing in Canada, to be honest. I thought the crowd there was so responsive and, and, and just so loving and like just reaching out. I did a, pro, uh, a Bob Prober tribute. Um, he had passed away the night before we played in Windsor, in his hometown. I came out in a Detroit Red Wings jersey, and uh, the crowd just went bananas. It was. The energy was just insane. It was, it was a time I'll always remember for sure. It was incredible. Watching you perform, it's, it's hard to imagine you doing anything else. Uh, if you weren't a musician, if you weren't a songwriter, what do you think you might be doing? I'd probably be dead. Can you expand on that a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll expand on it. I don't know. I, ever since I was little, I just I've always wanted to be a musician. I've, I've, I love music, and that's. That's really all I want to do. I, I don't think you really work if you're your own boss and, and, and you're doing what you love every day. You know, 
and, and music's certainly something I love and it's something I want to grow at and continue to do. So thinking about where else I would be would be taking away from what I'm trying to do. You've clearly had a lot of intense life experiences that you articulate into your songs. Sure. Um, what is your songwriting process like? Where do your songs come from? It comes from a really, like, like I said before, like a really honest place. Um, it's hard, it's not so hard writing the songs that come from your heart. It's, it's kind of harder letting go of the songs that come from your heart. Um, letting people that you don't even know know such you know, intricate details of your life. And you know, just releasing it to the world is, is, is where the difficulty lies. But um, to me, as long as you're honest and, and true with yourself and, and your art, and you're not putting on a front, you're not acting, you're not trying to be something you're not, that's where, that's where the true essence of everything kind of lies, in my opinion. Well, you are an open book on stage, and, and I think your emotions just kind of pour out to, to the audience and, and everybody there. What's, what's something that you think your, your fans might not know or we might be surprised to know about you? That's, that's kind of weird because I think I'm so honest that I think that they do know everything that there is to, to really know. I try, I really try not to hold back. Um, it goes a long way when you can just be vulnerable. There's a lot of perfection and vulnerability and I try and be as vulnerable as possible and if people don't like it, then too bad. And if they do, then I'll probably welcome them with open arms. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty decent dude. How natural was it for you to incorporate this vast array of musical styles into your into your act? I mean, at one point I noticed you break into Stevie Wonder Superstitious and then go back into your own songs and you do it like so effortlessly. Uh, how did this all come to be? It, it, it's natural because it comes from what I love or what I grew up listening to or what you know a member in the band is inspired by that inspires me. I love mashing up new things, showing people where I came from or what I you know, used to listen to as a kid whether it be like you know Led Zeppelin or Stevie Wonder or Earth, Wind & Fire or whatever. It's cool when you could draw, you know, bring your influences and, and mash them up with your own style and, and kind of give the crowd something. It gives somebody, it gives everybody something to resonate with. So. It resonates with a lot of people and it doesn't go unnoticed that at your shows there's an incredibly diverse audience. You clearly have appeal to, to a lot of different kinds of people. That's what I love. People are always like, I always get asked the question like, you know, what's your demographic or, I don't know, humanity, you know, mankind. It's, it's I, I could have a guy, you know, coming from Wall Street and, and a hipster, you know, chilling next to each other doing shots of Jack, just, you know, sweating their asses off, just enjoying a rock hip hop show, you know, and, and to, to see that is like, wow, you know, I have the power to bring people together. You know, music has that power. And if I'm a catalyst for that, then I'm doing something for you up for. Well, I think that there's little doubt that if anybody could get there, you will. I mean, you've got the, you've got the guts, you've got the songs, and you've got the presence uh, to to achieve exactly that. And again, by gauging the the diversity of the people that you appeal to, uh, I think you've got as good a shot as anybody. I really appreciate it, Jimmy. Coming from uh, a man of your caliber. And in such a, a wonderful outfit, that means a lot to me. You like the denim? Yeah, it's, it's looking good, man. So I got good. it out of your closet. Oh, really? Great. Yeah. Thanks. Well, best of luck to you, my friend. <laughs> Just and, make uh, sure you return it. <laughs> best of luck, and I uh, really wish you all the best. Appreciate it, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Peace.